Hi, today I wanted to talk you through setting up and using the QUFTP service application um, that's available in our app center on the QNAP. Um, so there are many ways to um, transfer files in and out of a QNAP. So obviously you can do things like SMB shares, which is what you would do um, with Windows or Macs. Um, if you're using Linux, you might use something else like NFS. Um, or if you're using um, virtual platforms, you might want to use um, iSCSI to mount storage. Um, FTP is usually really good for um, remote connections across slower, um, slower networks, so especially the internet. Um, there's a lot of different options inside our application, so I wanted to talk you through the different options. Uh, for anybody familiar with uh, QNAPs for a number of years, um, we used to have the FTP server stored down here under the application section. Um, it's grown to be uh, more than just a simple FTP server now, so we've uh, separated it out. Um, you can still see a shortcut to it within the network and file services. We do still have an option to do it. Or when you install the application, it just gives you an app icon directly on the desktop for you to launch, um, as well as from the three buttons at the top, you, the three lines at the top, you can also access all the apps from there. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll open up the application and I'll talk you through all the, uh, the settings uh, and options on the left as we go through chronologically. Some pages may have multiple tabs. Uh, but this is the, the main screen. You can choose a couple of different views, list views or map views. Map view is good if you've got lots of people connected all at once. You can see everything in, in one view. It's the view I generally prefer. Um, but here you've got uh, the, just the main overview that's going to show you just exactly what's happening right now with the uh, QU FTP service. Um, so when you first install it, uh, it will automatically have the FTP server enabled. And the only box uh, not ticked on this page um, at the top that we can see here is the FTP with SSL slash TLS. So I've ticked that one earlier. Um, that's just enabling me to do secure FTP connections, effectively encrypted FTP connections. Um, so amongst the other options down here, as we scroll down, um, you can do things like enable anonymous access, uh, add a welcome message if you wish. Um, add compression. Um, the only other change I've changed uh, from default here is the uh, setting the root folder. Uh, so what I've done is I've actually created on this NAS a separate share called FTP. So that's exactly uh, what I've got listed here. And that's where I'm telling the FTP server to put people once they log in. Um, I don't want them to have access to other folders on this NAS. I only want them to have access to the slash FTP. You can, of course, set it to any folder that you like, um, or you can just not set a root folder and they get access to any folder on the NAS if that's how you want to use it as well. Uh, one of the other really nice features here is we've got an option for FTP worm. So this is a write once, read many. Um, this means that you could have this folder set up so that a number of people can upload into it. Uh, but once the file has been uploaded into the FTP server, um, they have full write access to do that, but they cannot change the file later. So even though they've got write access, which usually means you can modify and delete the data uh, as well and um, this will actually stop that from happening so you can enable uh, the ftp worm function on on certain folders if you want if you wish so that that means that if people are using you as a dump folder uh, they can't go after the fact and delete something that's been uploaded um, only you can do that as the admin and you can do that through file station or a file share uh, this only applies to people logged in over ftp it doesn't change it for anybody using any other network protocols to access that folder um, and you can also set it to uh, send out alert messages. So if you're uh, waiting for a file to be uploaded, for example, um, you don't have to keep checking the folder or wait for somebody to tell you the file is there. Um, you can set up a notification so that when a change is detected in that folder, uh, you'll be told about it. So you can then go and check it. Um, so you can set up multiple notifications down here as well, if you wish. Uh, the other important option here on the, uh, the system option is connection. Um, so under connection, um, you've got lots of different options for limiting how many people can connect at the same time, um, how many accounts can log in at once with that login name. Perhaps you have a, a pool login that multiple people use the same login, especially if you're using the FTP worm feature. Um, a lot of customers seem to have like an upload slash upload username and password that they like for users just so that anybody that wants to dump data in, they can. Um, or you can also set uh, performance limitations uh, on the uploads and downloads uh, from the FTP server as well. Uh, one important section is the passive FTP section. So if you are using 
um, the uh, the FTP server remotely, um, you will typically be behind a firewall with your QNAP. Um, so you do have to open up um, not just the standard FTP ports, which are on the general page. So that's over here, port 21. Um, I would generally recommend forwarding ports 20 to 21, first of all, and then I would come over here and then I would forward um, the defined port range here as well on your firewall. So what I mean, what I mean by forwarding, um, so you would go to your uh, firewall software and you would tell it to let the ports through to the QNAP IP address that in my case, that's 10.10.0.195 on my network. Um, it will be different for yours. Um, so I would tell my, my router, my firewall to open up the ports 20 and 21 plus these ports through to my QNAP for the QUFTP service um, to make sure that anybody that is connecting in remotely, uh, they're able to do so uh, with all the ports that the FTP service is listening out for. You can change this port range, you can reduce it from this amount of ports to something a lot smaller if you wish, um, but that's what I would recommend doing. Um, so passive FTP is more often than not used when uh, you're, you're using the, uh, the FTP service um, from behind a firewall, um, so passive sort of uh, helps, helps that work. Uh, you can also set the external IP address when it responds as well. So rather than the NAS or the FTP service responding with uh, connect to me on 10.10.0.195, which wouldn't work across the internet, you can set the external IP address of your internet connection uh, for them to, uh, to come back in on instead. Um, so that's the uh, the system section. We'll move now on to the users section. So users, this is exactly what it sounds like. You can create uh, different users um, and you can choose whether or not those users um, have FTP privilege or not. Um, so just because they're a user on your NAS, it does not mean that they have to have FTP access. Uh, you can restrict them here and you can change the settings for the different users over here on the right. Um, exactly the same for groups. You can set the, the groups up with different rules. So rather than doing individual users, you can just uh, put everybody into say an FTP group where, where that group is allowed access. And if they're not in that group, they don't have access to the FTP. Uh, we do have a rules engine, so if you click create here, you get options to restrict um, certain access hours for the FTP server. You can limit the access to certain things. Uh, you can choose to have watermarks automatically inserted into uh, pictures or videos that are uploaded to the FTP server. Um, and you can choose source and destination uh, locations for those watermarks. And so you can create multiple rules there as well. Um, so that's the FTP server portion, which is people logging into the, this, this NAS to access data. Um, the other really, really nice option here is we have an FTP client. Uh, so over here on the left hand side, you can create remote connections. So if I was to click create here, I can actually set up FTP access to something else that's running an FTP server. So quite often you may have um, a website, let's say, and if you want to upload changes to your website um, or pull data down from your website reports and things like that, maybe instead of everybody on the network having to log into that uh, that target separately, what you can do is you can tell the NAS to do that login. So you can set up the uh, username, password, hostname, IP address, uh, everything that you need for that FTP server in your NAS and then it will mount it to a, uh, a specific folder on your NAS. So this is going to allow people um, in your office to access the NAS for that offsite FTP server, uh, rather than um, them having to open up an FTP client and go do it, do it separately. So this is a really nice feature for you to be able to add remote FTP locations. Um, the logs are also pretty detailed, so it gives you a lot of information about who's logging in, things that have changed, um, any settings that have been done, so you can change uh, system events, so this is changes within the service, um, or you can go to the system access log, which is every time a user has logged in, logged out, what they access, things like that, whether it was an upload or download, uh, so you get a lot of information here as well. Uh, so now I'll show you connecting to it. So here I've got uh, uh, a nice FTP client here. This is FileZilla. Um, so here I'm going to type in the information that I need to log in. So for me, I'm not accessing it remotely. I'm sat with it. So I'm going to do my local LAN IP address, which is in the address bar of uh, Firefox there in the background. So I'm going to do 10.10.0.195. Uh, the username for my NAS is just Craig and I'm going to type in the password uh, that I'm using and I'm going to choose port 21. So that matches the port number um, that's set over here. So I'm going to log in on port 21 to access this. Um, so I'm just going to push enter now 
and I can see that it's logged in, everything's connected. Um, and now I can see on the left hand side here, everything on my local machine here and everything on the right is the remote site. So in this case, it's the, uh, it's the NAS. Um, so you can see different informations, file sizes, file types, things like that. So if I want to download something, I can right click a file, I can download it, I can add them to a queue. So if I click download, that's now downloading. And if I come back to the overview page over here, we should see that I'm now logged in and there's a transfer happening. It gives me download speed information. I see monitor. So that's the list view. If I switch it to map view, we can see that Craig's logged in. So if you've got multiple users logged in, I find this view a bit uh, a bit better and I, I find these monitor tables a bit nicer. Um, so this is just showing you what's happening, who's transferring what, um, and, and getting that data down. So it's uh, a nice user interface, very easy to use um, for, for anything that you need to do with FTP. Um, again, we do have a few different ways to access your NAS remotely. Um, this is just one of them. Um, this is a free app. It's just available in the App Center. It has no dependencies, so you don't have to have something like Container Station um, installed first or anything like that. It's just a standalone application. Um, so we can see that that's uh, still downloading there. We've nearly downloaded that, uh, that whole um, ISO file there of Windows Server 2016. Um, so that's finished. It's now stored on my Mac here. And we should see that the uh, connection monitor drops off instead of transferring at a certain speed. It's dropped off the cliff now because the transfer has finished. Um, so yeah, that's QUFTP um, uh, on the NAS. Um, it's available for, for every single NAS that we do that runs the QTS or QUTS Hero operating systems. Um, doesn't matter what the CPU is. It doesn't have to be Intel or AMD. It will work on any of our NAS. Uh, if anybody has any questions on this application, please do let me know and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot. Bye.